Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our New Moon Manifesting call. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Taurus New Moon and this powerful new moon and lineup of planets that is supporting us. But before we get started, I actually want to take us through a breathwork exercise where we're doing what's called box breathing. And that means it's, it's four counts in, you hold for four counts, you breathe out for four counts, and you rest for four counts, and then you start again. And box breathing actually helps us in activating the parasympathetic nervous system, that calming part of our system. And this full moon, I mean, this new moon is so vital for us to be grounded and anchored that I want to start with this um, activity so that we can be grounded during this new moon and actually, hold on, I need to mute somebody. There we go. Um, make sure that we're staying grounded and anchored. So I'm going to start the song because it was actually a really good tempo for breathing, for breath work. So you, those of you just joining us, we're going to start with a little breath work exercise just to get grounded and anchored and activate the parasympathetic nerves, nervous system. So what the box breathing is, is we breathe in for four seconds, we hold for four seconds, we breathe out for four seconds, we hold for four seconds. And we'll just do it three, three times just to get us into that centered place. So let's start this song because this was a really good rhythm. Maybe. <laughs> of course, now my phone doesn't work. All right. Okay, here we go. And breathe in. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, in, and hold, and exhale, and hold, and inhale, and hold, and exhale, and hold, one last time, breathe in, and hold, and exhale, four, and hold, two, three, four, and just breathe normally again. I just wanted to bring you into a grounded place because this new moon is all about being open and receptive to what's taking place in your life, as well as planting those seeds in fertile soil so that they truly can manifest. So those of you who are just joining us, thank you for coming to our New Moon Masterclass. We're going to be talking about the Taurus New Moon tonight. I'm your host, Jana Grosskost, and I am an astrologer, a metaphysical teacher and healer, as well as a business coach and money coach. So and this is a great new moon to be talking about money because Taurus is all about the money system, banking system, the economy, and we'll talk specifically about where this is hitting in the houses because it can help you in understanding what types of careers are best for you or what's the best way for you to make money and really making the most of that. So let's pop up screen share here. And this new moon is taking place tomorrow, May 11th, 2021, and it's taking place at 2.59 p.m. on the East Coast. And this is all about planting new seeds. It's about, um, you know, really affects the second chakra. So you want to make sure that you are creating something that is going to be taking time to gestate. 
something that is unique to you, something that you're going to birth, some idea, some inspiration, something that's coming about. This new moon also reminds us to tune into nature. Since it is an earth sign, it's all about learning and, and attuning to the rhythms of nature and making sure that you're honoring those rhythms. It's a great time to get out in nature, to spend time hiking or walking or hugging trees or putting your feet in the grass, enjoying the birds singing and the flowers blooming and all of the elements that are really heightening our senses. And Taurus is really about all of our senses. And so you may be more sensitive in general or more sensual. And this is a great time to really expand what that feels like for you and really honor that within your body. So get in touch with your physical body with this new moon and make sure that you're honoring what rhythms are coming up for you. And, you know, especially like the moon rhythms. That's why I do this every single month is so that we align with that, that emotional side of the moon. This new moon helps you align with Mother Earth and really helps you tune into what matters most to you. So Taurus rules your values, your value system. There may be outdated values that this is a great time to let go of, or maybe there's some new values that you really want to embrace. So take some time, journal about, you know, what's transitioning for you, what you find most important and value, and prioritize that in your life versus things that are less important or unimportant anymore and let go of those things. So let's look specifically at a chart. Um, it's really smart to pull your astrology birth chart because nobody's gonna have the same houses. And as you can see for this person, Taurus is taking place primarily in their 11th house and a little bit in their, I guess it's all 11th house. Um, but it's important for you to know where this is taking place so that you really can set your goals and align with where this lunar cycle is taking place. Um, it's taking place at 22 degrees of Taurus, so it's the later degrees, which means it's going to be moving into Gemini very quickly. So you want to set your intentions tonight, tomorrow, around the time of the new moon, because probably by midnight it will be moving into into Gemini. Um, this new moon really helps you see the beauty in your life, see the beauty within yourself, and to, you know, it could be a time of sprucing up your home and feeling more comfortable in your space or shifting your career and feeling more at home with that. This has a very grounding presence that is nurturing and motherly. So you really want to tune into where you're feeling nurtured in your life and how to expand that so that you feel nurtured all the time. With this new moon, we have the sun, moon, and Uranus that are um, the major planets that are in Taurus. We also have black moon, Lilith, and we have Ceres, which is the goddess of fertility. So there's a lot of newness around fertility, new growth, planting new seeds, those types of things. I know we talk about planting new seeds with every new moon, but this one is really potent and powerful. So you want to make sure that you're setting seeds and intentions that are based on what you really love and value and that bring you beauty and feel, help you feel nurtured in life. So with Uranus taking place in Taurus, this has been taking place for a couple of years. There's this sense of revolution. Uranus is the innovator. It creates sudden changes or shifts gears in our lives that Maybe they're things that we don't expect, and yet they move us closer towards our goals. So notice what revolution or where you're feeling rebellious in your life and how that fits into whatever house this is falling in for you. There's this square that's taking place. So these red lines right here are the square that's taking place between Uranus and Saturn. This is gonna be taking place pretty much the entire year. Uranus is pushing for newness and freshness and innovation and creativity. And Saturn is holding on to the old way of doing things and it's, you know, old structures and patterns. So see where this is taking place. Both of these planets are hitting for you because that's gonna be a prime opportunity for you to see structures that are falling away. And that's gonna be in Aquarius. 
versus where you're being led, where you're being in this innovative stream of consciousness that's pushing you forward and moving you towards um, more awakening, more spiritual growth, more personal growth, all of those key elements that keep us evolving. Now, Taurus rules the money and banking system. So this is a great new moon to set your intentions about a specific money goal you have. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to create a, a game plan of paying off debt or create a specific structure that supports you in reaching a specific goal. And when we go off camera, I'll show you my, my two tools that help me with manifesting more money. Um, because it is a physical earthly sign, this is a great new moon to set your intentions and really focus on manifesting in physical form. And that includes allowing your roots to dive deep into the earth. So think of that new little seedling. You plant the seedling in the earth and the roots need to grow first before the seedling ever sprouts up. So this is a time for you to really dig deep roots, tune into what you value around that goal, why you really want that goal, because this is all about being creative as well as innovative and, and really honoring authentically what you want. Making sure that your goals are your goals and nobody else's because it's easy to try to please other people and do things for others when in fact we need to ultimately please ourselves. Otherwise, it's difficult for us to stay connected with our why and why we really want that goal. So as we're moving forward, we also have some interesting planets. We've got three planets over here in Gemini. We have Mercury, the North Node, and um, Venus that are in Gemini. And Mars was there last month. So Mars was activating new ideas and inspiration. And here Mercury is coming along and it's helping us communicate what we really love, what we wanna move forward with especially with it being conjunct to the North Node. So the North Node is where we are moving personally and collectively. So knowing where this falls in your chart is going to be important. Hello, I'm Lee, I'm in it. For you to, it's gonna be important for you to be able to recognize where you're moving in that direction. And then of course, Venus is about love. It relates to money, it relates to um, your values. And so you may be communicating new messages <clears throat> that really align with what you value most. Now, these three planets are basically at a trine with Pluto. Pluto just went retrograde. And Pluto in Capricorn is doing a lot of restructuring of old systems. So it's breaking away any power struggles that we've had. It's supporting us in transforming where Gemini is moving us forward and communicating a new message. Pluto is helping break away the old systems and allowing us to grow and evolve. One other interesting point about pulling your chart at this time is we also have um, Jupiter. Jupiter is moving into Pisces at the end of this week. And Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion. So with this moving into Pisces at the early degrees before it goes retrograde, this is going to help you tune into your daydreams, your nighttime dreams, maybe see things from a bigger perspective. Maybe things that you had thought about, but it's starting to, um, ideas are percolating or you're getting some insight about the direction to go and it's a lot bigger than you expected. So really allow that expansion to take place and honor where this is taking place for you. Allow yourself to dream, dream big, you know, let yourself go wild with this and tune into what's taking place for you. So with the sun, moon, and Uranus in your chart in Taurus, some of the activations that you're going to want to look at or consider is activating your values, what values you want to hold on to, which ones you're ready to embrace more of, making sure that you're aligning with nature's rhythms and tuning into what your body is saying because it is a very physical time. This is an opportunity for you to ground your goals and we'll actually go through an activity to help you set your intentions and really ground those goals. Literally see yourself planting those seeds, allowing the roots to go from your bottom of your feet into the earth 
And then finally, this new moon is about enhancing beauty around you, your physical space, your personal presence, anything that helps you feel more uplifted and inspired, this is an opportunity for you to really enhance the beauty in your life. So one of the awesome things about pulling your birth chart is you're able to see which house this is falling in for you and set your intentions around that specific goal. For example, if this was taking place in your fourth house, this would relate to home base and creating domestic comforts. It's about creating comfortable furnishings. It's about wanting and securing practical, um, you know, practical finances and security, emotional security, those types of things. If it's taking place in your ninth house, this would relate to communicating complex ideas, maybe abstract ideas, but bringing them down into an earthly way of expressing them to other people. It's also an opportunity for you to view the world with, um, you know, from a very sensual perspective, very creative. So this, this type of person, they could have a job in the publishing, they could be in the beauty industry, they could publish book, uh, like a cookbook or, you know, something related to Taurus. It also relates to art and appreciating art. You could be an art critic, those types of things. So knowing where the new moon falls for you is going to be important for you to set your intention specifically. Does anybody know what house that this new moon is falling in for you? If you do, you can unmute yourself and um, let me know. And we can. Yes, last question. Hi. Oh. Hello. Yes. Oh, um, I have it in the seventh house. Okay, so this is going to relate to um, partnerships. So you want steady, reliable partnerships. Uh, maybe you have a partner that's very stable. Um, maybe they're very practical in nature, or you may be the one that's very practical in nature. You may want a partner that has uncomplicated needs um, or somebody that has equal income, something like that. Anyone else? I have it in my 11th. <clears throat> all right, 11th house. This is all about groups and connecting socially with others. So you may have, you may be in art groups, you may have humanitarian interests that you're very involved with. Um, you could work with groups of people who are stuck in some capacity and need support in healing and evolving. You may be in food and wine tasting groups. Um, you may have a dedicated fan base that's always following you. Is any of that true for you? Uh, well, I'm working, I'm still working on my doctorate. So there's a little bit of all that in there for me <laughs> for, for what my audience will be when I'm done. Okay, I love that. At least you're working towards it. And that's all that counts, right? Progress, not yes. perfection. <laughs> Progress, progress, progress. Anyone yes. else? Yeah. yeah, this is for the fifth house for me. And it's interesting because it kind of fits in with the theme of, um, of, of, of Taurus anyway. Yeah, and fifth house relates to having fun. It's about love. It's about being childlike. It's about working with children. It's, um, you know, you could be in the art world or... Um, you know, teaching art to have fun or as a healing modality. Um, you could be easily amused with other people and, you know, just having simplicity in life and having fun in life. Is that the type of work you actually do? Um, not really, but, you know, I have three grandkids that keep me busy. So, but yeah, there's some, yeah, I, what I do is, is um, HR consulting on the development side, not the regular um, HR side. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'm trying to figure out how that fits into fun, right? Like, <laughs> well, there is a piece of fun, you know, there is, you know. So you're looking at more of the creative development of people? Yes, right, okay. right, right, right. Yeah, I could see like that. The where you're... Right, the leadership development piece, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I could see that. Absolutely. Okay, nice. I like that. Anyone else know where this is falling in their chart? Uh, it's in the eighth house for me. 
Eighth House. Eighth House is all about transformation, right? And death, taxes, um, shared resources. It also has to do, you know, especially with Taurus. Taurus is so such a, such a sensual sign and really aligned with your um, senses that your senses may be very, very heightened, that you may have very acute intuitive abilities that not only support yourself, but others. You may be a beauty consultant. There may be practical ways of working with terminally ill pe people and supporting them as they're transitioning in life. Um, you could be in massage therapy, um, you know, or other ways that help people feel relaxed and transformed. Is any of that true for you? All of it. I'm a Scorpio son, um, and I am a holistic therapist and a body worker for over 20 years. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, you've got Scorpio son, and then eight, and then your second house is in basically the Scorpio energy too. So, making money as a Scorpio, I love it. Let me, uh, I'm going to stop. Complicated, sure. making money as a Scorpio. <laughs> Very complicated. Oh, always, right? That shared resource thing. And yeah, yeah absolutely. Let me pop up the chat here because I'm sure there's some people. Have I pulled a chart? I did pull a chart. Can I find out what house for you? Um, not online right now. Um, it takes way too much time for me to pull it. Eva, I love that it's in your fifth house. Did you hear what we were talking about? Or were you the one that asked about fifth house? So, I mean, I love the work that you do because it is very sensual. It's fun. It's about tuning into your physical body. Yes, it's totally perfect, right? Like this is, this is the way that you should be making money. So I wanted to show you, this is a great time to write a check from the universe. This is, oh, it's going to probably be backwards, but I just, um, I printed this out. It says it's from the abundant universe is who made out this check to me. It's made out to me. It's uh, for a dollar amount and then assigned by the abundant universe. So this is a great new moon to actually set an intention of what you want to create over the next year, because sometimes our goals take more than a month. I'm not saying that you can't get it in a month, but um, sometimes our goals take longer than that. And the other thing is you can take a dollar bill. I didn't have a dollar, so I actually used a five. Um, or you can take any de denomination and actually write on it what you want. So now I want you to think of a number. What number would you like to receive on a monthly basis? Just think of that number for a minute. Don't go into your head and rationalize it like, oh, I can never do that. That's not me, right? Like I want you to tune in to a number. Think about that number. Now I want you to add a zero to that. So whatever number, if you had $5,000, I want you to add a zero to that. Now, you, now you're getting $50,000 a month. That's the number that I want you to write on your dollar bill or five or 20 or hundred, whatever you want to put down. But I want you to put that number and either put it on your vision board or put it in your wealth corner of your house if you're into feng shui. Um, but have something that's visual that you can see, that you can tune into and tap into and <laughs> create an anxiety. Okay, we're gonna work on that because the last thing I want is to add that zero to that number and create anxiety. I actually want to help you align your body with that number because the universe is abundant and it will give to all of us but the big part of us is us being open to receiving that gift right so if you think oh i need more education i need more training i need more blah 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 it's like no i have seen people that have that are highly educated with master's degrees and beyond that make very little money. And I'm not talking about money being, you know, that you're chasing money, but I, I want you to have the money that you need to create the life that you want. So if you only want a small amount of money, that's fine, right? I'm not, there's nothing, no judgment on my part on what that dollar amount looks like. But I can help a lot more people as a wealthy person than I can as a poor one. 
And I love doing humanitarian work. I love supporting people on their journey for health and wellness and especially money wellness. And I'm on a mission to transform women and empower them financially by helping them understand the practical side of money. So all the you know, financial responsibilities as well as the energetic sides of money so that they truly can manifest more. So to do that, we need to be more. We need to have our goals and dreams and expand them. So as I mentioned, I've seen people that are highly educated that literally have difficulty making money. They may wanna make more money, but they have difficulty making more money. And that comes down to their mindset, their belief systems, their limiting beliefs, their glass ceilings, whatever they have set for themselves, including their family programming around money and success. That has a huge impact on your ability to receive more because your family DNA is a part of your DNA, which affects your ability to actually receive, even though you think you're worth more. So we have to clear all of those blocks and get out of that place, which we will work on in just a moment. Now, on the other side, I've seen people that have a high school education that become multimillionaires. So it's not an education thing. And often we substitute education for, you know, the fears. We, we hide behind those fears. And education can sometimes be that jail that, you know, those bars that we're hiding behind because we think I'm not educated enough. I'm not smart enough for this. I don't have the, you know, whatever the creativity or whatever it is to actually move beyond those bars. When you're the one that has created those bars, those bars are unlimited from the universe. They're nothing to do with universal abundance. Your job is to be open to receive. And so the more open you are allowing your hands to be open and receiving whatever gifts the universe gives you with ease, with grace, with gratitude, with, um, you know, whatever fills your heart with love and joy, then you'll actually be able to expand more. So I wanted to pull up one more thing. Do, do, do. Also talk about um, what other tools will support you and knowing what house this is falling in can help you in determining what essential oils will support you. One of the reasons that I love using essential oils is they support us on a physical form as well as an energetic and emotional. So there's huge benefits by integrating essential oils into your manifesting routine. Any of the grounding tree oils are going to be super supportive with this energy. Again, deep roots growing into the earth, something like vetiver, like frankincense, like patchouli, um, any of the tree, uh, the pine oils or, or fir oils like Siberian fir or black fir or juniper berry. These are gonna be ones that really, cedar wood is another one. And then myrrh is another one because it is the oil of mother earth. So any of the tree oils, some of my other favorites that really support second chakra include any of the citrus oils, because they support with creativity, with expansion, with um, new ideas, with being inspired, stimulating serotonin, all of those goods that, you know, good things that help us to feel inspired and uplifted. And then spice oils, spice oils like cinnamon, black pepper, cardamom, pink pepper, um, cassia, uh, what other spice oils, star anise, any of those oils, they bring that spice to life. So Taurus really supports second chakra and maybe creating a blend with a tree oil, a spice oil, and a citrus oil would be very supportive of your goals and intentions. And if you have questions, um, you can definitely email me, either respond to the emails that you get from me or contact me at healing at newmoonmanifesting.com. So I wanna open up for other questions that you have. Anyone have questions? Do y'all know where this is falling in your chart? If not, there is a short video on 
my website that walks you through how to pull your astrology birth chart with transits so that you can fine tune your manifesting and align it with what you want most. Yes, fifth house, I love it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do it on a progress chart. I just pulled it natal chart with transits is what I typically pull. But you could do a progress chart um, if you feel inspired to do that, Colleen. Any questions? Um, yep, Ken, does it make a difference between a progressed or the natal? I mean, would be... Yeah, it does, because the progressed chart does change over time. So I like, to, I like to see where things were when I was born and then what's transitioning now. And that would okay. be the transit side of it. So it does make a difference. Um, and obviously, there are a lot of different charts you can pull. So I kind of stick with just the natal chart with transits to keep it simple. Okay. But you could do both and see what, you know, how much things have changed with progress chart. Okay, great, thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else? Questions? All right, so if you have a specific goal that you are setting with this new moon, we're going to go through an activity and help set the intentions for it. If you do not have a specific goal yet, you can either come back to this, I'll be posting it and give you a link later. It's available on YouTube. Or you can set your intention based on the money that you want to receive. Whatever, whatever money that you tied into with that extra zero on it, you can tie into that. Because I'm gonna take you through an activity that helps you feel in your body whatever it is that you want to manifest. And like um, who was saying, Sarah was saying, as soon as, I, uh, as soon as I stated adding the extra zero, it created anxiety, right? And that's often the case. You may have some goal. And as soon as you set that goal, it's like, it's like great, you've set the goal. Maybe you've written it down. Maybe you've done something, put it on a vision board. But 99% of the time, there's some sort of anxiety that is holding you back from actually achieving it. And so we're going to go through what's called the peace process to help you align with your goal and alleviate any of the stress, anxiety, fear about getting this goal, whatever is taking place for you, so that you really can tune into and allow your emotions to align with this goal. Because if they are not, then it will be very difficult to manifest and you'll think the system doesn't work for me, the universe doesn't love me, I must not be worthy of this goal. And that none of that is true. You are all worthy and deserving of amazing abundance. And so we want to tune into that abundance. So go ahead and get comfortable and close your eyes. And let's take a couple of deep breaths just to center ourselves and get into our body, breathing in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Breathe in deeply all the way down to your belly. And as you exhale, release your shoulders. Just rotate your shoulders up and back, allowing your chest to open. Just allow yourself to settle into your body, breathing in deeply. And as you exhale, release any tension you're holding in the upper back, the lower back, the mid body. And one more deep breath all the way down to your belly. And as you exhale, just imagine all the energy going out through your legs, down through your feet, just like roots going into the earth anchoring you in physical form, anchoring your energy to the earth. Just tuning into your body for a moment, focusing on your breath, just being present with what you feel. And if 
there's a specific goal that you have, I just want you to state it in the present tense. Something like, I'm so grateful that I now have, maybe there's a specific job that you're looking for. Again, Taurus is about how we make money in the world, how we manage money. It's about our value system. Just think about a specific goal. And if you are setting a money goal, like what I showed you with the dollar bill or with a check, I know I asked you to add a zero to whatever that number is. I want you to tune into that number in your body. I'm so grateful that I'm now receiving how much money? And I know it may be causing you stress and anxiety right now, but we're going to work on that because something that is creating stress and anxiety, there's some emotion behind it. And we want to get to the heart of that emotion to release it or really to give it a voice, allow it to be heard and felt so that we can resolve it. So just notice where you're feeling that in your body. There may be a very specific acute point and I just want you to take your middle finger and hold it on the most intense point that you have in your body related to your new moon goal or your money goal. You can just say it in your, you can either say it out loud or in your mind's eye, just say, I am so grateful that I now have and state that goal. And notice where you feel that in your body. There's no judgment on what you're feeling. All you're doing is bringing that awareness all your focus and attention on that spot in your body. We want to stay out of your mind. We want to stay in the body and what we feel. Our biggest challenge in manifesting anything is our fear of our feelings. And when we fear our feelings, we actually suppress them. When we suppress them, we're unable to manifest what we want because we're now operating from this state of fear in some capacity. Now, if this area moves in your body, this intense point, if it moves, just move your finger to the most intense points that you feel. And if you feel inspired, drop a number into the chat, a number from one to 10, one being very negligible, you can barely feel it. There's hardly anything there. And 10 being, it's off the charts, anxiety, stress, really intense. Just notice what you feel. It may have already changed since we started this process. Great, just, just be present with what you feel right now. As it changes, drop in the chat what's changing for you. I love it. We've got some low numbers. Fabulous. Yeah, the, we want to get this. We want to get to a place where we feel comfortable and confident. So we want to get it down to a one, a zero. We don't want the emotion behind it that's creating that stress, anxiety, fear, whatever. So just be present with what you feel right now. <laughs> I love that, Cheryl. I was excited when you said add a zero. I know. Isn't that cool? <sighs> yeah, it's so powerful. So amazing. When we can really align with abundance and tune into that. And that's what we're doing here. We're just allowing ourselves to be open to receive what the universe is waiting to send us. And if we're not getting what we want, then we need to look within and find out what's taking place within me. What, you know, what's holding me back from receiving more. You may feel energy moving. You may yawn. You may uh, take a deep breath. Just notice what's taking place with you. Just be present with what you feel. And if you're already down at a one or something very negligible, 
The next thing would be to tune into what would be one action step that you would need to do to make this a reality. I love it. You guys are doing great. Lots of ones. So let's say, for example, that you had a specific money goal or maybe there was a job goal. Is there a specific action step that you would need to take right now to help make that a reality? And if you tune into what that feels like in your body, notice what's taking place. That resistance is gonna be a high number, that knotted feeling somewhere in your body. That's fabulous, Jody. I love it. But this is a invest equals fear. <laughs> right? Like, okay, I want the money, but now what do I do? Right? Yes, investing can create fear. Absolutely. Yes, and it, it all comes down to building your confidence with that process, right? Like even starting small with a couple hundred dollars a month and consistently investing in the same type of instrument or the same mutual fund or EFT that can support you in creating that, that ultimate stream of income that you're looking for in the future. Yeah, there's definitely some energy moving. I can feel it like bubbling up and expanding itself. So keep allowing yourself to be open in this moment. You're in a safe space. You're literally surrounded by unconditional love at this moment. Your guides are supporting you. Your ancestors are supporting you. They're holding space for you to create something magical and amazing. So just drop in the chat any changes that you're noticing with the numbers in this process. For some of you that were at higher numbers, is it dissipating at all? Is it still pretty intense? Sometimes when it moves too, it, the intensity will shift. So it may be lessening in one point, but then it intensifies in another, and that's okay. It's part of the process because we have layers of different emotions that we feel and they're locked away in different parts of our body. So the more we can tune into what am I feeling and being very present in your body, you're giving that emotion a voice. You're giving that feeling an opportunity to be expressed. And often when it's expressed, it gets released almost instantly. So as it moves to a different location, it could be a different emotion that's coming to light, some sort of different reaction, feeling, whatever. You are so entitled to this money and freedom. Absolutely, Cheryl. I'm so glad you're in women rocking money too. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get a double whammy because we're gonna talk about this as well as upper limit barriers tomorrow night, so. Yeah, super exciting. Anyone want to come on and share what they're feeling in this moment? What's taking place for them? You are all entitled to creating financial freedom, investments, and everything else that supports you in creating the life that you want. Those of you that were at higher numbers, drop in the chat or unmute yourselves and let me know where you're at right now. I just wanna tune in with you and see what's taking place. So I, I just had, and it, I mean, I, I went for the extra zero, which I think is what created this um, reactivity in my body. Yes. And, um, it was, 
I, I think I, so I created the extra zero plus, right? So something that the extra zero could be connected to um, that I'm working toward. And I felt immediately just this like blockage in my throat. And the longer that I sat, it shifted down into my solar plexus. And then it kind of, everything kind of eased up. And then when you started talking about action, it went right back to my throat. And I was like, oh, and I just felt like, <laughs> And I, work, I, right? it's, I mean, I know that I have, um, I know that I have a story around money that needs to be unraveled. So I, I like, I can see where it's coming from. Uh, it was interesting that it was, so, that I had so much anxiety in my body and in, in reaction. I didn't really expect that. Well, I'm part of that being in a class like this where, you know, I'm allowing the space for you to feel something very deeply. It does trigger things more so than, say if somebody off the street just said, you know, what, how much money do you want to make this month? Add a zero to it. And you'd be like, right. oh, okay, well, that sounds okay. But this is about deep healing and allowing your body to relieve itself of all of those, you know, the tension, the anxiety, the stress, the fears, everything else that really stops us from attracting that. So even as we talk into you know, sometimes our mind wants to make this happen really fast. And even we kind of have to poke the bear with this and say, okay, well, let's tune back into the original goal. So if I ask you to tune back into your original goal of I'm so grateful that I now have blank, see if it's still at that low number or if it is elevated again. Because again, our mind wants to drop this down and get it to, you know, get it down to a one or a zero because that's the goal, but we wanna stay out of our mind and in our body. So as you tune back into your goal for this new moon, has anything changed? Are you still at low numbers? Are you feeling anxiety? What's taking place? You can either drop in the chat or you can unmute. We have a really small group, so I'm fine if you wanna unmute. There's definitely still some energy moving because I can feel it. I hope you are too. And even if you're not, it's okay, right? Like I'm just holding space for you and allowing you to be present with your body and present with what needs to take place for you to achieve this goal. And if you wanna drop in the chat number of where you're at, This is a really simple process. It's called the peace process. My energy feels like it's shifting from anxiety to excitement. I love that. So as you're going throughout your evening, I just want you to be present with what's taking place in your body. And if you can do this before you go to bed where you just close your eyes, state your goal again and tune into your body and allow this process to work it will actually help resolve it, especially at night. It supports with the healing process. It allows your mind to stop processing and just really be present in your body. And oftentimes you have a deeper night's sleep, you feel more relaxed, you feel less anxious, and you have more energy when the new day starts. But I love that, Sarah, because I think you were one of our higher numbers this time. So definitely shifting from anxiety to excitement. And this is an activity. You can see how simple. In five to 10 minutes, we went from something of feeling anxiety or stress down to feeling more calm and relaxed. And it's something that you literally just have to tune into your body, stay out of your head, state your goal, and feel what that feels like in your body. And if you're feeling excited about that goal, then I want you to tune into the first action step that you would have to take to actually help you achieve that goal. And when you can get those action steps, for example, if, if my goal was I needed to make 10 sales this month and my action step was I need to pick up the phone and talk with people and I would do everything but that, then it's going to, that goal's not gonna to come to fruition because I'm not taking the action steps that would actually support it. 
So I need to make the phone calls or tune into the peace process of where I'm feeling that anxiousness and stress and get to a place of feeling confident and then making that phone call. So that's an example of an action step that you would take to achieve that goal. Does that make sense? Seeing if we have any comments here. Anyone have questions or comments they want to unmute and ask about this new moon, about this process, what's taking place? Yes, get on your action steps, girl. Love it. Yeah, it's, it's one thing to just set a goal. And I do this in all of my strategic planning where, you know, it's great to have a vision board and be able to visually see that. And sometimes I can manifest things just from that. And then sometimes you actually have to have specific goals with all of the action steps that get you there. So it's a part of the strategic planning that I do. <laughs> Costume crisis, I love it. <laughs> Wardrobe malfunction, yeah. How's everybody feeling now? Are we getting down there number wise? Are we feeling confident, more confident? I feel peaceful. Good. That's what we want. That's why it's called the peace process. It helps us, yes, yeah, Sarah, it helps us to get grounded, to feel more peaceful to allow our emotions to be felt, to get them out, right? Like energy needs to move through our body. Emotions need to move through our body. And often we feel something uncomfortable and we suppress it, we hold it down, we ignore it, whatever. And that doesn't serve us in the long run. And so whenever we feel a similar feeling, we immediately go into anxiety. And when we can allow that feeling to have space to be felt, then it often resolves itself in just a few minutes. We've, you know, in less than 10 minutes, look how you feel different. And I realize we're in a, in a safe container and I'm providing, you know, the narrative to keep you going. But, you know, this is something that's simple enough that you can tune into your body, allow yourself to feel any stress and anxiety and to allow that to resolve. Thank you so much, Marissa. Anyone else questions, comments, anything coming up? Hannah, you did strike a chord with me. I can't believe, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't even think of this. So I have meager investments from a divorce settlement and I just watch them like a hawk and just keep hoping that they're gonna be okay. But you're right, I could be throwing a couple extra hundred bucks to help make that grow. I, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together myself for like the last couple of years because I could have been so much further ahead if I had like thought, but it was fear. It was fear of holding on to the few dollars that I did have, which is not earning any interest anywhere at this point. It's yeah. just sitting like a lump. Right. Um, so I'm actually kind of excited now. I mean, you really, you really did kind of set me off on a, an action path that I can, you know, something I can actually look into and take action on instead of just sitting here and hoping maybe I can do something to contribute to keeping that pot of money growing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes it doesn't have to be huge dollar amounts because compounding is so important and doing something every single month where you're contributing to it, whether it's just that investment or if you've got a a 401k that you can invest in. Um, it's just, it's the consistency. Right. And it's learning what is in your budget that you could reallocate funds towards that specific thing. A lot of people, you know, including me, and I feel that this is you too. It's like, well, if I can't contribute a thousand dollars a month, then, then I must not be able to contribute anything. Right. Right. <laughs> right. That few hundred dollars a month grown over time, I mean, it's probably money that you wouldn't even miss. No, right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 
I tell Particularly people, during COVID, all the money I didn't spend, I'll be honest, you know, I do have a little bit of a lump of cash sitting in my checking account. And even if I just turn that over. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple things that I recommend. Um, one is to always have $1,000 cash on hand. Yeah. And then the other one is to have six months worth of your living expenses in a savings account. Yep. And I do. six to 12 because who knows what's going to happen in our world, but yep. you know, it's not out of fear, but this is really common right, planning around money. And then your third thing after that is then you have your money goals, whether it's retirement or vacation or kids education or whatever, but then you're, you know, you're allocating funds towards, whatever whatever it is you want to do and it's super simple to set up in fact i just moved um i had all these little 401ks from different companies i worked at and so i just set up a vanguard account and like 60 percent of my money is going into a bond fund and 40 percent is going into a stock fund um or 70 30 i can't remember what split i did um but it's going to make a lot more money than you know first of all in the bank where it's paying absolutely nothing right now Right. And now all of my 401ks are consolidated. So I don't have to look at different statements. I just have it all in one place. So it took me all of 10 minutes to set that up and start to fund that. So it's very easy to do. I think um, I do have an investment person and I did exactly that, except for maybe one, two little like CDs or something that I, I kept separate because I still have some of that old school thought, like not all your eggs in one basket. So even though I might have a couple of CDs at a bank level, I have the, the rest of my investments with one financial advisor person. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yes, yeah, but so I just look at your budget and what you could yeah. allocate towards investing on a monthly basis. And that, you know, if it's a traditional IRA that would give you a tax write off, um, and if it's a Roth, then, you know, you pay the taxes on it now, but you know, save more money, right? Like, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. I like, at least I'll, at least I will feel proactive, even if yes, it doesn't come out to be much. I can at least say, you know what? I took some steps. I did the best I could. I, I was proactive instead of just sitting here and looking at my statements every month and, you know, watching them go up and down. I, I feel helpless doing that. Yeah. No, it's fun when you see it grow. I, I look at money like a game. And that's why I love teaching classes on money because, you know, when you can get to a place where money's a game and you actually give it attention, then you actually attract more money to you. And so to me, it just becomes fun and magical when you can do that. You know, it's kind of funny. I'm refinancing my house and I'm, I'm we're doing the paperwork Thursday and I just got the final paperwork and I'm actually getting more cash out at this point than what we had planned on, just the way the numbers fell. And I'm thinking, oh, now I'm a couple of thousand dollars more ahead. And it falls in perfectly with this new move. Yeah, <laughs> and that's perfect take, timing. Right? Maybe I'll take those couple of thousand and turn that in, you know, over to the investment. Invest it. That, yeah. yeah, get that started with something. But it's kind of ironic how that timing worked the out. Because I started this in January. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. right. They just took the banks forever. So it's kind of interesting to me that it's happening Thursday. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. That's Fabulous. Funny. I love it. All yeah, right. It's a, well, it's I love hearing those types of stories. Anyone else? All right. Well, we will wrap up for tonight. And if you do have questions, please reach out. If you have questions about oils and your chart, which ones would support you, please let me know. And um, yeah, this is a fun, this is a really fun new moon. So enjoy the energy, get grounded, get connected with your body and really connected with your goals and dreams because you're the only thing that's stopping them from coming, right? So when you can get out of your head and into your heart, then you're gonna be more likely to actually achieve them. So thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on the Gemini New Moon Masterclass. Big hugs to all of you. Bye. Big hugs. Hugs. Mwah. Kisses. Mwah.